Let me go back to where I was now. <laughs> Obedient Christians have confidence in a powerful God. Verse, and I read chapter 4, verses, verse 20. I want you to look at verse, verse, uh, verse, chapter 3, verse 20. It says, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. Sometimes our heart will condemn us because we have sinned. Conviction. God will convict us. But I want you to see here the confidence that we can have in a powerful God. Notice what it says. It says, God is greater than our hearts. Verse 20 says, God is greater than our hearts. Even though it condemns us, God is greater than our hearts. His mercy is greater. God's mercy is greater. I tried to say this this morning. I messed it all up. Grace and mercy. Mercy is not giving us what we do deserve. Grace is giving us what we don't deserve. Say that again. Grace is giving us what we don't deserve. Right. Mercy is not giving us what we do deserve. I'm thankful for God's mercy in my life. Yes. God's grace in my life. First John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. And just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's faithful and just to forgive us. His mercy. See, as I was studying and preparing for this, this message, and God gave me this, this message, if you will, through another man who... Look, I, I lack confidence sometimes. We went door knocking yesterday. You go to the door. I sure hope they don't answer. I noticed I didn't ring the doorbell. Must not be anybody home. That's a lack of confidence. That's a lack of confidence. I know the truth. I know what the Bible says. We have to have confidence. I was reading and studying and, and, and sitting. As I was studying and reading this preacher he reminded us of the Old Testament tabernacle the Ark of the Covenant you know it contained the tables of the Ten Commandments inside of it that was a constant rem reminder of failure let's see the Ten Commandments were a, a picture of what the law to show us our failure to show us that we would fail. A constant picture of that. But over the ark was a mercy seat made of a slab of gold as wide as the ark. There was a picture there of God's mercy. Although I'm going to fail many times, He's still going to have mercy. I can still go to the mercy seat. I can still go ask God for mercy to not give me what I do deserve. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all our iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Remember when Peter said, 
He denies the Lord three times. Lord, I won't deny you. If I have to die with you, I won't deny you. Jesus Christ says you're going to deny me three times for the cock crows. And he did. The most, one of the most beautiful pictures in Scripture of his, of his forgiveness of Peter, of his mercy in Peter's life, was simply when he came back and he showed himself to Mary after he had resurrected. His words to Mary was, go tell my disciples and Peter. I couldn't imagine what Peter how Peter thought. Go tell my disciples and Peter. Even when we are discouraged and feeling unworthy, his love is greater. His love is greater. His knowledge is greater. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence. Excuse me. Let me go back. Verse 19. God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. See, God already knew what you were going to do before you did it. Isn't that scary? God knows the decision you're going to make. He knows the right decisions you're going to make. But he also knows the wrong decisions you're going to make. He knows the things that, are, that you're going to do for him. And he knows the things that you're going to do because of sin in your life. There is nothing you can do that will surprise God. He loves you, knowing all about it. If our heart doesn't condemn us, we have confidence. In verse 21, beloved, if our heart condemn us not. In other words, there is not that sense of conviction. We have confidence. Well, how can we have that, that sense of confidence then? By constantly being on our hands and knees before a loving God and asking for his forgiveness. Keeping my relationship right between him and I. Well, how do we keep our relationship right between those around us? We, we talked about the fact that our relationships with those around us can affect our relationship with God by constantly making sure that we seek forgiveness for those that we wrong. For those that we hurt. For those that we go against. For those, once again, if, if, if you know you've got an offense against the brother, you've brought your offering, you've brought your sacrifice before the Lord, you've brought it before the Lord. He said, but leave it there if things aren't right. And you go and you find your brother and you make it right. That's not easy. It's not easy to admit you did wrong. It's not easy to ask for forgiveness. But I want confidence in my walk with God. I want confidence in my relationship with God. The only way to have that is to seek forgiveness. I must seek God's forgiveness. I must seek those around me's forgiveness. Confidence is based on my relationship with God and my love and my relationship to others. As we continue on, what's where we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments. My confidence in Christ also depends upon my obedience to Him. My simple obedience. Uh, there's been several messages that I've, I've noted, to note, gone back and noted that with, where it's just simple obedience. Go 
Go clean your room. Yes, sir. Well, you're back quick. How'd you get done that quick? I saw you. Oh, it's clean. This is always my ask. Is it mommy clean? Or is it daddy clean? You know, there's a difference, right? There's always a difference. As much as I try to, to, especially when she was out of town last week, as much as I try to make sure the house looks like she wants it to look when you get back, it's, there's a difference between daddy clean and mommy clean. There just is. But simple obedience. Walked into the girl's room last night and as I walked in, I said, okay. Is it clean? I walked in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's clean, Daddy. Okay. Then what is that toy right there? Well, I didn't know where to put it. Can you figure out where to put that? Yeah. Okay, what's that right there? Oh, I was just eating that. So that's where the trash leaves? Safe? Oh, no, no, I'll get it. Are you supposed to have food in your room? Well, y'all let me last time. Why is that on your bed? Well, because I was playing with it and I figured I might play with it later. Look, I say that because it goes back to this. Our, our relationship, our confidence in God, our confidence in Christ is based on our obedience to His commandments, to His word. If I'm not obeying His word and standing on His word, I have no confidence. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking. For me to have a confident Christian life, I must be obedient to Him. I must seek obedience to Him. I must call on Him. And, and look, it, this all goes to my obedience and, and, and praying and spending time in prayer as well. Notice what He says uh, in verse 22. And whatsoever you ask, you receive of Him. Now some, some people take this and they go all over with it. All you have to do is ask and you'll get it. But sometimes I ask a mess. Because I'm asking for what the flesh wants, what I myself want, and not what God wants. What God desires. And you know what? Sometimes He'll give it to me, He'll let me have it. But my confidence is built on the fact that I can go to Him in prayer. I can go to him. Look, if my relationship is right with him, I can have confidence. And when I have confidence because of my relationship with him and my relationship with others, guess what? I can go to him confidently in prayer. I can be confident in how I approach the throne of God. Hebrews 10, 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Is that word boldness? Confidence. I want you to understand whatsoever you ask. I can be concise in my prayer. I can be confident to be concise to ask whatsoever. You know, that's a neat word. Whatsoever. In other words, I have a choice. I have a choice in what I want to ask for. But how many times are we vague? Lord, bless us today. Woo. Well, that just means he's just going to leave a penny on the floor for me. It's a penny more than I had, right? So technically he's blessed me, right? God gave me the confidence that if I'm if I am right with him, I'm obeying him. 
I am right with those around me. I have not. There's not a there's not a, a blight between me and somebody else that's keeping God's blessings off my life. I can go to him and ask him whatsoever. And can I tell you, with God, the sky's the limits. I'm not saying that that he's always going to give it to us. Because he knows what we need. You know, there's a difference between a need and a want. I need this at the store. Oh, you do? No, it's more like a want than a need. But I can have confidence in prayer. I can have confidence and I can be concise in things and be specific in things. James chapter 4 verse 3 You ask and you receive not because you ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. So I want to be confident in my relationship with God. It means I have to be confident. I have to be right in my relationship with Him. I have to be right in my relationship with others. I have to, I want to be confident in my prayer life, which means I need to be obedient. I need to seek God's word and I need to understand it. I want to be right with Him. And can I tell you our obedience affects our prayer life? Our simple obedience affects our prayer life. I read an illustration about a man who's praying hard for the salvation of his son. He, read, he, he was praying, he was praying, and the pastor quoted him a verse, Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. See, my iniquity is my lack of obedience to my heavenly father. And if I am not obeying and I regard that iniquity in my heart, guess what? The Bible says God will not hear me. That takes away my confidence in my prayer life, does it not? Well, I'm praying, but I just, there's nothing happening. And I feel like my prayers are just reaching to the ceiling. And I'm reaching to the ceiling, really. So we don't have confidence in our prayer life. Well, why do we not have confidence in our prayer life? Because we're not obedient. I want to have confidence in the, in the fact that God has promised me another comforter. See, I want to have confidence in my relationship with God. I want to have confidence in my prayer life. And I want to have confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. Uh, too many times uh, that has been taken and, and drawn all sorts of directions. The Holy Spirit in my life. Or the term evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life. But look, I want you to, I want you to understand this morning. God promised us the Holy Spirit to guide us to all truth. And I want to be, I want to have confidence that, that I have the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is, I am allowing the Holy Spirit to lead me. And that I'm making the right decisions. And that He is guiding me into all truth. I want to have that confidence. Because I want you to understand, the Holy Spirit is there to bear witness in my heart. You go into the Unfortunately, today you go into the, the yellow pages, which most of us don't do anymore. We Google it. But you go into the yellow pages, and do you know that um, uh, spiritual counseling is listed among the New Age movement stuff? And the whole purpose is uh, that they, that's there is, is really a place to have a harmony with the spirits of this world. That's the New Age. Thank you. But it's lumped in there with uh, with medicine card readings, aura photography, astrology, rapid eye technology, hypnotherapy, spiritual counseling. We 
We've got to be careful. But I want you to understand. He that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. God promises the Holy Spirit. I will not leave you comfortless. I will send another comfort. He will guide you in all truth. Now, you may not have quoted that exactly. Please forgive me. But God's word tells us that he will send us another comforter. And when he sends him, he will guide us into all truth. And that's what we, look, we were talking, I was talking about this, um, uh, there was uh, the networking meeting that, that, uh, that meets here on the property on Thursday mornings right now. I stood up before them and I said, what, what gives you, when you stand before someone and you're going to sell your product to them, what gives you the basis to win them over to your product? What helps you win them over to your product? Now, I'm just talking to them and, and, uh, and giving the opportunity. I get to preach to them. I get to give them the gospel every week. But I said, what gives you? And they said, well, the knowledge we have about our product. I said, huh, the knowledge you have about your product. I said, so what you're saying is the truth that you know to be true about your product. I got a couple of smiles. Oh, why? Look, you, well, you know, everybody stretches, you know, the fish story. I caught a fish. I said, but when you're not giving truth, you have no confidence in what you're saying, right? You said, you know, I, I'm somewhat responsive, somewhat they're closing their mouth now. And I'm not going against their products. But I'm going against the fact that the, the thing that we can stand on, that gives us the boldness, that gives us the, the uh, ability to stand, is the fact that we're standing on absolute truth in God's Word. But how do I how do I understand the truth? How do I get the truth? How do I grasp the truth? How do I get it? How do I grasp it? I grasp it simply because God has promised me through the Holy Spirit that He will guide me in all truth. And I gotta have confidence in the power of His Holy Spirit. It's not about what others say, it's not about what this person says, it's not about what it's about what God's word says. If I hold to the philosophies of man or the teachings of man, guess what? They will fail. If you hold to the philosophies and the teachings that I have personally, they will fail. But if you hold to the philosophies and the teachings of God's word, it will never fail you. Hey. But I've got to have confidence. Well, that confidence all stems from my relationship with God and my relationship with others. It all goes back to simple obedience. Can I tell you, we could just get a grasp on simple obedience this morning and every day of our life Can I tell you, we can live confidently knowing we're obeying God. See, this all goes back to the simple obedience of this. Do you know Christ Jesus as your personal Savior? Do you know him? If you know Christ as your personal Savior, uh, the first step after receiving Christ as a personal Savior, if, if you will, is a step of obedience, and that's called baptism. Called believer's baptism. 
But we've got to have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Well, what is that? I've got to recognize that I'm a sinner. I've got to recognize that there's nothing else, nothing I can do to save myself. Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and for yours. Accept that free gift that he offers to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoso believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's a free gift. Amen. But to make it a gift, I have to what? Accept it. Recognize I'm a sinner and I can't do anything about it. Recognize that he's already paid the price and all I have to do is accept it. Then by faith, accept that gift and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Or there's nothing I can do about it. God, you have sent your son to die for my sins. And I am accepting by faith that he died for my sins. And he rose again, according to the scripture. The purpose of this is understanding, folks, I want to have confidence in my daily walk. I want to have absolute confidence in my daily walk. And I want to recognize uh, the confidence I can have in the fact that God has given me his Holy Spirit to guide me in the altar. To recognize the truth. To hear the truth. To hear a lie. But can I tell you how uh, bankers learn whether a, a, a piece of money is phony or not? They don't give them phony money. They don't give them fake money and say, okay, this is what fake money looks like. They simply give them real money all day long, over and over and over and over again. So that when the fake money comes along, it looks a little off. I can have, we can have confidence in the Holy Spirit. And guess what? He's going to guide us into all truth. And that we, as he guides us, we'll have that confidence that he'll show us that which is not true. Confident. Confident in his Holy Spirit. Confidence in my prayer life. <coughs> All these things are things I desire personally. I want to be confident in my prayer life. I want to be confident in my in my walk with God as far as the Holy Spirit is concerned. Now, how many of us today, you know, we made a decision? Well, I sure hope that was right. I sure hope that's what I was supposed to do. I sure hope that's what I was supposed to say. my relationship with God, my relationship with others, which comes back to obeying God. Obeying His commands. All this was based on, you saw it several times, He that keepeth His commandments. Uh, and this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of the Son of God, Jesus, excuse me, believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. And love one another as he gave us commandment. What are you saying? I'm telling you what to do. Just do it. You know, it's amazing how hard of a time we give our children, we give the children around here about obeying us. Isn't it? When they're learning from the best of us. Because we simply don't obey God. Everything you do, you're teaching somebody something. I'm wondering tonight, this morning, excuse me, I'm wondering this morning how many of us need to go back and recognize just ask God, what does the Bible say? Search me, O oh God. And know my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me. And later on that passage says what? Create me a clean heart, O oh God. And re renew a right spirit within me. God, I know I've not been obedient. I know because of my disobedience, my relationship is not right with you. God, because of that. 
God, because my relationship's not right, look, I have no confidence. Because I'm not saved this morning, I have no confidence. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't dwell within me. God, your presence is not with me. I have no confidence. As a Christian, I have been disobedient. Because I've been disobedient, I don't have the confidence that you desire for me to have. Look, I'm not, this is not talking about uh, having a, an